monosaccharides have a choice. They can either exist in the open chain form or in the cyclic form. And because the cyclic form is more stable and lower in energy, it's the cyclic form of the sugar that will predominate. So let's take a look at glucose. Glucose is an example of an aldohexose. And what that means is it contains an aldehyde group on one end and it contains six carbon atoms, carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the D-glucose will predominate in the cyclic form. And because this is the open chain form, it will have to undergo an intramolecular nucleophilic addition reaction to form the cyclic conformation. And so what happens happens is the blue hydroxyl group attached to carbon number five attacks this carbon, the electrophile of this aldehyde group. And we form a bond between this oxygen and this carbon. And this bond is shown in purple in this diagram. So this is the bond formed between the blue oxygen and the green carbon. Now, this basically becomes a hydroxyl group shown here. So this is carbon number two, this is carbon number two, this is carbon number three, carbon number three, four, five, six, and so forth. Now, notice that we actually have a mixture of two types of isomers. And we form this mixture of two types of isomers we call atomers, the alpha atomer and the beta atomer, because this nucleophile can attack the carbon either from the top side or from the bottom side. When it attacks from the top side, it forms one of these. When it attacks from the bottom side, it forms the other isomer. Now, what is the difference between these two atomers, these two isomers? Well, if we examine the stereochemistry, of carbon number one, we'll see that the stereochemistry of carbon number one is different in these two cases. So all the other atoms are arranged in the same exact way, but the atoms on carbon number one are arranged differently in alpha and beta atomers. In the alpha case, we have this hydroxyl group points down in the opposite direction with respect to this group attached to carbon number five. While in the beta atomer case, in the beta D glucopyranose, this hydroxyl group is attached, basically points up and points in the same direction as this group attached to carbon number five. So less than 1% of this mixture will exist in the open chain form and the remaining will exist as a mixture of these two cyclic forms. Now it turns out that about two thirds will exist in the beta anomer form and one third will exist in the alpha anomer form. So the question that I'd like to answer in this question is why is it that the beta anomer form of glucose predominates? What makes this molecule predominate over this molecule here? And the answer lies in, ex in examining the chair conformation of these two molecules. So remember from organic chemistry that anytime we have a six membered ring, so a ring structure that contains six atoms, that ring structure will take on the chair conformation because it's the chair conformation that is the most stable type of arrangement of atoms. All these atoms in the chair conformation are as far away from one another as possible and that basically decreases the energy of that chair conformation. So, now in any chair conformation, we have two types of positions. We have the exile position and the equatorial position. So the exile bonds are nearly perpendicular with respect to the plane of that molecule, while the equatorial bonds are nearly parallel, so they point away from the plane of that cyclic molecule. Now, Remember that it is energetically favorable for large groups to be found on the equatorial position rather than the exile position because it's the equatorial position that points away from the general structure of that cyclic molecule and it points away from the other groups and so what that means is because the groups point as far away from one another as possible when all the groups lie along the equatorial position that will create the least amount of steric hindrance and what steric hindrance means is it will create the least amount of electric repulsion. 
So, for instance, if we examine the following hypothetical uh, cyclohexane molecule in which the first carbon and the third carbon contain these large green groups that point along the axial position, because these point along the axial position, they will essentially bump with one another, their electron densities will slightly coincide, and these electron densities, because they both have negative charge, will basically create electric repulsion. And that electric repulsion will increase the energy of this molecule compared to the case when these two groups would point along the equatorial position. So, with that in mind, Let's compare the alpha D glucopyranose and the beta D glucopyranose in their chair conformations. So let's begin with the alpha D glucose. So how many carbon atoms? So we have one, two, three, four carbon atoms within. Uh, no, we have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms within this six member ring. Five of these carbon atoms contain the large groups that point or I'm sorry, four of these five carbon atoms contain these large groups that point along the more stable equatorial position. But along the carbon number one, this hydroxyl group points along the axial position, which is, as we said just a moment ago, the higher in energy position. And if we examine the beta case, we'll see that the stereochemistry on carbon number one of the beta anomer is the opposite. And this hydroxyl group actually points along the equatorial position. So in the beta D glucopyranose, all these large groups, this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here, they all point along that more stable, lower in energy, equatorial position. And that's exactly why it's the beta anomer that is lower in energy and more stable than that alpha anomer. So this is the energy diagram. As we go higher up, the energy increases. And because in this particular case, this hydroxyl group points along the axial position, this molecule will have a lower, uh, will have a higher energy and so will be slightly less stable. And that's exactly why this will predominate over this alpha anomer. So, generally speaking, in six-membered sugar molecules, it's the beta anomer for the glucose that will predominate over the alpha one because of what we just discussed. So, the beta anomer of glucose is favored because all the groups lie along the less hindered equatorial side. Now, we not only have six member rings in our body, we also have five member rings. So we have fructose molecules that exist as five member rings. We also have ribose molecules, and ribose are very important because they're constituents of nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA molecules. And if you studied DNA molecules and RNA molecules, you know that ribose exists as a five-membered ring. So, in fact, ribose is a pentose. And what that means is it consists of five carbon atoms. So this is the open chain form of our ribose molecule. So we have carbon number one, two, three, four, and five. And notice just like the glucose, ribose is an aldose. It contains an aldehyde. And so what happens is we have that same type of intramolecular nucleophilic addition reaction take place, and this attacks this electrophile nucleophilically forming a purple bond that is shown here. Now, this is an example of the beta D ribofuranose. We can also have the alpha D ribofuranose, but only the beta D ribofuranose is shown for simplification purposes. Now, unlike six member rings, which exist in the chair conformation form, five member sugar, five member rings, five member sugar molecules exist in a puckered form we call the envelope form. So, 
Why do we call it the envelope form? Well, simply because it looks like the and it looks like a simple envelope. So on an envelope, the four corners lie along the same plane. So these corners are known as coplanar. They lie along the same plane. And by the same exact analogy, if we examine the five-membered ring of ribose, four of these atoms will lie along the same plane. So there are two types of conformations. We have either the C2 endo or the C3 endo. In the C2 endo, it's the second carbon that is puckered. So we have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. This is, let's say, our oxygen. And this is the last carbon number five that is essentially puck, or uh, this is the carbon number four that is puckered. So in this particular case, it's this carbon number two that is puckered. So this is the carbon number two that we have in this diagram. And these other atoms, so this carbon here, this carbon here, this carbon here, and this oxygen here, these lie along the same exact plane. And likewise, in the other type of conformation C3 endo, where the third carbon is puckered, this, uh, this becomes the third carbon, and so now this carbon number one, two, four, this oxygen, all lie, uh, lie along the same plane, and carbon number three is the one that is puckered. So we see that inside our body, it's the ring structures of sugars that predominate. In the case of six member rings, we have the chair conformation, and in the case of the five member rings, we have this envelope form, this puckered form, that will basically exist. And we either have the C2 endo or the C3 endo, in the C2 endo, it's the second carbon that it's the second carbon that ends up being puckered. In the C3 endo, it's the third carbon that ends up being puckered.